We're making keto waffle cones. Let's go. It's warm weather somewhere in the world and I thought wouldn't it be great to come up with a whole range of ice creams for you guys to try. Of course in this video we're doing keto waffle cones but they are not dairy free and we're going to be doing a keto ice cream then we're going to be doing dairy free cones and dairy free ice cream. This gorgeous recipe is not my own, it's by Low Carb No Carb and I'm using her recipe simply because you cannot mess with perfection. And she's got some amazing recipes and I've left a link to her website in the description box as well as nutritional information and your ingredients list with two sets of measurements. Let's get into the recipe now and first up I'm going to make the batter. Beat one egg white to stiff peaks, add one and a half tablespoons of sweetener and whisk, a fourth cup of protein powder and whisk. If you're using vanilla whey protein powder, it will already be sweetened and have vanilla in it, so you can skip those two ingredients. I'm using tasteless and unsweetened. A fourth cup of almond flour, then whisk again. You can see I have splatter on the sides of the bowl, so I scrape the bowl to incorporate it into my ingredients. Add one tablespoon of heavy cream and you guessed it, whisk that again. Then add one tablespoon of butter either melted or at room temperature and yes, yes, whisk it. If you want to make chocolate waffle cones, it's at this point you would add one to two teaspoons of cocoa powder, depending on if you want them darker. And you could also add about half a teaspoon of vanilla. Lastly, sprinkle a quarter teaspoon of xanthan gum over the batter and give it a final whisk. And scrape down the sides of the bowl one last time. Now that the batter is ready, you need to fry your cones. And I use a very cheap waffle iron. You do get automatic waffle irons and I believe you can do it in a frying pan, but it's much more tricky. So I'm going to give you some tips using this iron and maybe you could also apply some of those tips if you have an automatic machine or your frying pan. Over a medium heat, heat up your waffle iron for a few minutes. And when you place the dough, don't place it directly in the center, go slightly off towards the back. From my experience, if you place the dough in the center, you will end up with the lacy edge like that. And you'll see some of that in my upcoming footage. All right, one tablespoon of the batter goes off center. And when you close it, let the, the lid rest on the dough and then let it rest for about 15 seconds. This is so that the back end can solidify and it'll stop you having that lacy edge because that's where your dough gets squashed up. So let the lid rest on there and then as it cooks after 15 seconds, gently close it and then you can lock it. I cooked mine for two minutes on the one side and then turned it over and cooked it for another two. Then I let the dough cool off for about 30 seconds to a minute so that when I'm working with the dough, I'm not burning my hands. I won't talk much for this part cause it's best you get the visual, but do watch my fingers and we will show you the technique from different angles. Do let the cone rest in the shaper until it's cool and then pry the shaper out of the cone. I found the best way for them to keep their shape is to stack them like this and they will keep for up to a month stored in your pantry. Coming up in our next video, we have an easy ice cream recipe that's going to yield scoopable, beautiful ice cream without using allulose and without using alcohol. And we have seven, no, seven different flavors. 
<laughs> if you want to check out my take on a Ben and Jerry's ice cream, do click on this link now. I hope you get to try this recipe and let me know what you think. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe and be well.